All right, I think I'm live. I think everything is set up the way it's supposed to be. Hopefully. Probably not, knowing my luck. If I can get a yay or nay from those of you who are watching in the chat room to tell me if the audio is right, I'd be appreciative. I am not nearly enough prepared for this stream, so just know that I have no clue what I'm doing. I had all these plans to watch tutorials and look at guides and all that stuff. I didn't have a chance to actually do that, so we're going to be kind of flying by the seat of our pants, as per usual. Excellent. We got some yays. How's everybody doing tonight? Probably going to be streaming for about an hour, hour and a half or so, kind of like usual, so. We'll see how it goes. I have three different ISOs prepared. I'm not sure which one's the actual one. I think I know, but I'm not sure that I know, if that makes sense. So we'll see how it goes. And like I said, I haven't looked at any tutorials. I watched a little bit of the old tech bloke stuff, but I didn't have a chance to finish it because taxes. <laughs> That's really all I need to say about that. Um, so, uh, I don't know if Slackware is hard to install. I haven't installed it ever. I know literally nothing about Slackware other than it's really, really old. It's one. Of, it's if not the oldest, or if if it's not the oldest, it's like the second oldest Linux distribution. So we'll see how. This, like I said, we're gonna see how it goes. All that could happen is it could be a complete and utter failure. So, we'll see how, like I said, we'll see how it goes. I do know that I need, I'm in need of a haircut. This is getting ridiculous. I've been offered a lot of help to install this, so we'll see how it goes. Usually, I'd, I like to do things on my own. Bumble through and learn, learn stuff. I'll ask questions if I need help. It has been an extraordinary long day. I spent three and a half hours today doing my nephew's taxes. And it wouldn't have taken nearly as long, but he's decided that he needs to invest in stocks and bonds and cryptocurrency. And I had no clue how to do that, so I had to learn how to do that today. It was not a very good experience. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Nobody likes doing taxes, and you especially don't like doing other people's taxes. But it, it happened. Apparently, I'm the tax guy because I do my parents' taxes too, my brother's taxes, my taxes. Uh, I'm just going to rename my office H&R Block. Well, I'm pretty sure it's actually not um, like an Arch. It's not like a Debian-based distribution from Debian. I'm pretty sure that it's more Arch-like, in that it's all TTY stuff. But I could be wrong. And maybe it's end curses. Like, I, I don't know. I've only seen some parts of it. Like, I know you use FDisk to partition stuff or CFDisk if you want. Uh, but beyond that, I didn't get through anything. Like, I have the video open if I want to continue through it. So, that it goes. It's going to be in a virtual machine. I don't have the capability of recording on on hardware. So we're going to go ahead and get started here, I think. I think, actually think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and turn the camera off completely. And like I said, I'm going to be installing this in Vert Manager here. And I don't know if there's anything special I need to know to do that. If I come across with problems, I will look them up. So... We'll see how it goes. All right. Might as well. Like I, said, like I said, I have three different ISOs here that I downloaded. I downloaded the... This is the one I'm going to try first. This is the one that is linked to on the home page. And then there's these other two that have the live environment, I think, is what those are. If I don't succeed with the first one, I'll try one of these. These ones here look more 
happy to me, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, hit finish here. Hit yes. And wait for this to go. We'll go ahead and get ourselves a thing. Now, I think this prompt is just for entering extra parameters. If you don't need to enter any parameters, hit enter to boot in default kernel. Press F2 for a listing of more kernel choices. Default kernel will boot in two minutes. Okay. One of the things that I need to remember to do is read. A lot of times I have a tendency to skip over stuff. So, if you are not using a US keyboard, you are now you may now load a different keyboard map. To select a different keyboard map, please enter one. Now, to continue using the US map, just enter. Enter. Okay. Welcome to the Slackware Linux installation disk, version 15.0. Important, read the information below carefully. That's for you, Matt. You will need one or more partitions of type Linux prepared. It is also recommended that you create a swap partition type Linux swap prior to the installation. For more information, run setup and read the help file. If you're having problems that you think might be related to low memory, you can try activating a swap partition before you run setup. After making a swap partition type 82 with CF disk or F disk, activate it like this. Okay. Once you have prepared the disk partitions for Linux, type setup to begin the installation process. You may now log in as root. Okay, so let's see. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I think we have to do this now and there's no password so if you're upgrading an existing slap slackware system you might want to remove old packages before you run setup to install the new ones if you don't your system will start still work but might, there might be some old files left laying around on your drive just mount your Linux partitions under M and T and type package tool if you don't know how to mount your per partitions type package tool and it will tell you how it's done. To partition your hard drives, use CF disk or F disk. To start with the main installation after partitioning type setup. Okay, well we're gonna try this. I've only used CF disk a few times, so actually you wanna I think I'm gonna be happier with F disk, but I might be wrong about that. We're gonna try F disk first. Oh, it's all has to be okay. We gotta do the. We gotta know what the drives are. So this is VDA. So so F disk slash dev slash VDA. I think. Here we go. Okay. Quick quick question, how do you use SSH? That's not a quick question. Uh, Mental Outlaw just did a brand new video on SSH. I know DistroTube has done a video on SSH, so give it a good YouTube search and you'll find several videos on it that are very good. I'd be the wrong YouTuber to ask. I am not good at SSH. I use it, but I don't understand it. You think I should use CF disk? I've only used it a couple times. So we'll try CF disk. Maybe it'll be better. Okay, so which do we need? I think we can do DOS on this because we're not using UFI, right? I think we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead with DOS. See if, see if it works. Um, so we need we have twenty gigabytes. I think 25 gigabytes. Use GPT. So I did that wrong. 
<laughs> Not surprising. Try again. Just do that one then. I usually use the DOS for everything else, but we'll do this. All right. So we want this to be 20 gigabytes. And type Linux. We want it to be Linux file system. I think that's what they need to be, right? Or can be let it be any can it be any of these? Or does it need to be Linux root? Alright, chat, you gotta help me. Already. Probably should uh actually All right, let's see here. Actually looking up a guide. Why not? I have a this is why I always uh, use the GUI installers because I don't remember any of this stuff. My brain, for whatever, filters it out. I learn it five or six times, and then I don't remember. It just says Linux. So if there's just a Linux selection here, which I don't actually see, I'm assuming that means that the documentation is old. Probably means that Linux... Okay. That's what I thought it was going to be, but they call, in the documentation it says just Linux. That's probably the way it comes up here. So do that. Uh, yeah, it's not the way it looks in the thing, but it's okay. So do, use this one here, and then type swap. Okay, I think I need to. Do I need to flag this? Is there a way? How do I do that? I forget. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad though. For sure, still available. In the documentation, it has a flag section, because so that must be like an older version of CF disk. That, mine doesn't have a flag section. I think I'm just gonna. Let's see, let's type. I don't think that that is anything else there. Linux Home Raid. I don't see a boot though. Extended boot. Boot. Free SD boot. No Linux boot. And we have to be root anyways, because there has to be a root drive. It says to create a swap, though. I was following directions. I think I can go ahead and just write this. We have to start over again. We have to start over again. And then we can quit. Control LS, LS, BLK. We now have two things here. And then we write, we do setup, right? Is the next thing. And here, welcome to N curses. The, the installer that only knows two colors. 
Well, actually, there's some color more colors here. All right, welcome to Slack Word Linux Setup. Select an option below using the up, down keys and space or enter. Alternate keys may also be used, plus or minus, and tab. Help, read the Slack Word help file. Well, that's for people who, you know, want to read directions. Key map, we've already done that. Add swap, set up your swap partitions. Detected, detected one more swap partitions on your system. Those partitions have been pre-selected to set up as a swap space. If there is any swap partitions that you do not wish to use with this installation, please unselect them with the up or down arrows and spacebar. If you wish to use all of them, simply hit enter key. Okay. Slackware setup will, will now prepare your system swap space. When formatting swap partitions with make swap, you may also check them for bad blocks. This is not the default since nearly all modern hardwares check themselves for bad blocks anyways. Would you like to check for bad blocks make, running make swap? Not the default, we'll just get no. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Your swap space has been configured. This information will be added to your FS tab. Okay. Okay. Please select a partition from the following to use as your root drive. You select this. If this partition has not been formatted, you should format it. This will release all data on it. Would you like to format this partition? I think the chat is a little bit behind. That's the reason why I'm actually not doing those things you're telling me to do. <laughs> we'll see. Like I said, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. All right, so we're going to hit format. And all right, here's something funny. I was listening to Tyler's stream the other night, and he said that BSD doesn't support EXT4. <laughs> Slackware's older than, well, is Slackware older than BSD? I'm actually not sure. BSD might be older, now that I think about it. Either way, it's, it's we weird that Slackware supports EXT4 and uh, BSD doesn't. So we're just going to use that. Okay. Now, please select the media from which to install Slackware. Install Slackware from CD or DVD. Install Slackware from USB stick. Install from a hard drive partition. Install from NFS, a network file system. Install from FTP, install from Samba Share, and install from a pre mounted directory. I think. Hello, choose no. All right. Yes, format. Yeah, I, I I get the differences between Linux and BSD. I know why it doesn't support it. Just it, the age thing makes makes me laugh. I'm not sure what Slackware determines the the ISO loaded into uh, Vert Manager is considered. So is, is it considered a CD or DVD, or is it considered a USB stick? That's what I need to figure out next, I guess. Here you'll tell the installer where to find Slackware packages. The most common used method is to install C Slackware installed DVDs or CDs. But there are various other options available. If you have your packages installed onto a partition that you set up in the previous step, you'll install from that partition or pre mounted directory. May need to mount the partition with mount first. See chapter 11 for more details. Additionally, Slackware offers a variety of networked options such as NFS, FTP, HTTP, and SAMPA. If you select a network installation, Slackware will prompt you to for TCIP, TCP IP information first. We're only going to discuss installation from DVD, but other methods are similar and straightforward. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what this is. So that's why it's probably default. So we're just going to do that. Make sure the Slackware disk is in your CD DVD drive, DVD, DVD drive and then press enter to begin the scanning process. Or if you'd rather specify the device name manually, choose that option below. 
always going to go auto. Here we go. Blackboard disk was found. Okay. Now it's time to select which general categories of software to install on your system. Use the spacebar to select or unselect the software you wish to install. You can use the up and down arrows to see all the possible choices. Recommended choices have been pre-selected. Press the enter key if you are finished. Okay, so base Linux system. So we're going to leave all this stuff exactly the same. Which um, it selects everything. So we're going with XFCE, which is good. XFCE is a good. Wait a minute. It's also going to install Plasma. What the hell? Why does it select all of this stuff? We don't need both. We don't need KDE. We're going to go with XFCE. Everything else can stay the same. And uh, we're going to leave Emacs there just for everybody to be happy. But the fact that it's default makes me laugh. Okay. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and, and hit uh, OK here. Now, now you must select the type of prompts you would like to see during the installation process. If you have the drive space, the full option is quick, easy, and by far the most foolproof choice. The newbie mode provides the most information, but is more time consuming presenting the packages one by one than by the menu based choices. Otherwise, you can pick packages from menus using expert or menu mode. Which type of prompting would you like to use? So it said the full option is the quick, easy, and by far the most foolproof choice. So that makes sense to. It says like full, but display. Ooh, 15 gigabytes of software. That might be a problem. I gave the whole thing 20 gigabytes. That might be an issue. I didn't realize I'm gonna, I was going to need more space. What is this, Arco? Uh, use verbose prompting for the to X... Series takes one year. You know, I am a newbie, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the newbie one. Why not? Newbie prompts mode selection, installing packages. This is a starter set of files from the term info database, which should be enough for most cases. The complete set from which this is derived can be found in a the Anchors' package. The term info base describes. So you're telling me I should go. Uh, is there a way to go back and check the terse one? Is it? Wow, the newbie one really does go one by one. Uh, all right, Blackware friends, can can you go back after I'm done this? Can I go back and select terse by hitting cancel, or am I stuck with this now? I'm stuck with it. I'll just keep going. Oh, I'm just going to... Oh, I can cancel? Hmm. No, that just takes me to the next one. Yeah, cancel just takes me to the next one. Oops. So, hey, hey, hey. I can't... <laughs> I don't think quit was the right one. I think I am going to start over and make a bigger one. Um, yeah. 
Let's see. Let's get out of this. And force quit this. We're going to start over again. I know more now than I did before, which is exactly where I needed to be. I'm going to delete this. Delete this. New. Forward. Browse. ISO. Slackware. Choose volume. Slackware. Where? Which is going to be this one here. And then hit forward. Give it four CPUs and four gigabytes of RAM and hit forward. And we're going to go ahead and give this a nice round number 50. It won't take that much, but it's better to have more than have to come back and do this again. And then we're going to hit finish. And now we can do go again. Uh, full screen, enter. Okay, so enter to just use the US, use US one, root, CF disk, so make this one 45 gigabytes like this go down here and new 5 gigabytes is fine this one here what the hell I quit why did I do that <laughs> okay starting over again starting over again 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 45 gigabytes this one here New five gigabytes type this one here should be Linux file system. This one here should be Linux swap and then write yes, and then quit setup. All right. You know, the more I use CFDIS, the more I'll actually, you know, remember how to use it. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead. So we do we've done these. Do this one first. Add swap. That's the right one. Okay. No, don't need to do that. Okay. And then... Please select the partition from the following list to use your root partition. Select format ext4. Okay. And that one. Auto. Now. I saw in the chat where it said I should just go ahead and leave the KDE stuff. So apparently stuff needs the KDE stuff. That's going to take forever to install, but just okay we'll just leave it and we'll hit terse because that's the, the default which we should have done the begin with like this okay yeah that's better than actually me installing it one line but one line at a time not too bad Yeah, I do. I do hit the enter key off really hard. <laughs> I tend to do that when I go fast. It brings out the clang in my keyboard. John, I think you're behind there a little bit. Yeah, so now I, have, I should have KDE and XFC, but that we won't be the first time I've ever had a GTK-based or a desktop environment in a 
cute one installed all at the same time. It's interesting that they're basically just giving you a terminal here, but with a green background or a teal background. Looks like a, if, if Dave 2D was to design a terminal, this is the, the, that's the background that he would choose. I'm installing Rust. And there's GNU Emacs. Woo! I'm assuming Vim will be installed. If Vim isn't installed, I'm just going to retire. It would be a travesty to see Emacs installed and not Vim. I'm sure Vise is installed. That has to be there. Breeze icon. So we're getting into the KDE stuff. Interestingly, not alphabetical order. Looks like it's going to download all the KD stuff. <gasps> That's awesome. I wonder if it's if it downloads Crusader, I'm going to be happy. That'd be hilarious if it does. It probably won't though. That Q4OS that I did a, the thing on yesterday, I was very happy that I had Crusader installed by default. That was cool. Vim was installed. Cool. Good. Conquer. Conquer is installed. If Conquer is installed, not Crusader. Crusader is installed. <laughs> That's awesome. Winning. <laughs> Every distro should have Crusader installed by default. Well, I'm going to have to uninstall Nano. <laughs> I am obsessed with, with Crusader. It's my favorite. Makes me happy. There's, there's a lot of package. I'm glad I gave it the full 50 gigabytes. I'm beginning to worry that even 50 gigabytes wasn't enough. It did install every package. It installed, sorry, with K. So it installed the entire kitty suite. And it's still going to install a lot of the GNOME stuff because it's also going to install XFCE. Why it chooses both of them as default, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Usually you don't see XFCE and KDE to, you know, install on the same system. It doesn't hurt anything. You're just going to have a lot of weirdness. Yes, I do love Crusader. It's my, it's my favorite Linux app. I swear to God. I, it, it. <laughs> I think I said this in my video, if I couldn't use Crusader, there's a good chance that I wouldn't be using Linux at this point. It's just a, a sad, sad truth because there's nothing out there that I've found that I like nearly as much and I use the file manager like absolute crazy. I know I get made fun of for it a lot.
Well, XFC is not built on GNOME. It's built on GTK. Jordan, Jonathan. Well, that that binary is taking a while to, to install. Well, I, I'm going to put this out there that the way that I've gone about it so far is not the most minimal way of installing Slackware. I just saw Wayland. <laughs> yeah, here's uh, there was X server. Audacious. We're gonna have like nine different ways of playing media. <laughs> Hex chat, Mozilla Firefox, the, the ESR version, of course. That's gonna take a bit. Oh, Thunderbird's here too. So we got Thunderbird and K Mail. Because I saw Kmail earlier. Sea Monkey, that's another web browser. So that's three web browsers. That's Firefox, probably more. Uh, X Screensaver, Grape, Elementary XFCE, X, another icon, an icon theme. Oh, here we go. Generating the initial RAM disk for use with the 5.15 generic kernel. Please wait. Oh, I can't read those so fast. It's going so fast. On config update. If your computer supports booting from a USB drive, it is recommended that you make a USB boot stick for your system at this time. It will boot your computer straight into the root file system. I don't think I need to do that, right? I don't think I need to do that. Hey. All right. Waiting for chat. Do I need to do this? This is for yeah, actually you're going to use it. Like is that like a backup stick? Is that what it's talking about? Waiting for an answer on that. No need. Okay, no. Okay, good. That's what I thought. Okay. Lilo Linux Loader is the generic bootloader. There is a simple installation which tries to automatically set up Lilo to boot Linux, also Windows. If found, for more advanced users, the expert option offers more control over the installation process. Since Lilo does not work in all cases and can damage partitions if incorrectly installed, there's a new third saved option, which also, which is to skip installing Lilo for now. You can always install it later with the little conf Lilo config command. Which option would you like to choose? All right, well, I'm going to try the simple one. Because I don't think that installing grub would be easy. So I'm going to do this is simple. Hopefully that's the right thing to do. Okay, looking for proc devices. It seems your kernel support for the VSub frame buffer console. If we enable this in lilo.conf, it will allow more rows and columns of text to be on the screen and give you a cool penguin logo at boot boot time. However, the frame buffer text console is slower than a standard text console. In addition, not every video card or monitor supports all of these types of video modes, all these video modes, and some X drivers could be confused by them. Would you like to use the frame buffer console or the standard console?
I think this is going to ask you for like a resolution, right? I don't see a proper resolution there. I don't understand the three dimensions of the resolution either. Oh, that's going to be, that last one's going to be, is that going to be color or size? Okay. I think I'm just going to use the standard, the safe choice. I think that makes more sense. Okay. Some systems might require extra parameters to be passed to the kernel. If you need to pass parameters to the kernel when you boot the Slackware boot disk, you'll probably want to enter the same ones here. Most systems won't require any extra parameters. If you don't need any, just to enter. So I'm going to enter. Lilo can be installed in a variety of places. The super block of your root partition, which could be made the boot, could be made the bootable partition with Windows. Or, okay, I understood that. It's just odd phrasing. A formatted floppy disk, the master boot record of your first hard drive. Options one and two are the safest. But option one does require a little extra work later. Setting the partition bootable with F disk. Which would you like to do? Okay, so which one of these do I choose? I'm not actually sure. Ah, Tyler, welcome. It says to choose MBR. Okay. I think I knew that. All right. The GPM program allows you to cut and paste text on the virtual consoles using a mouse. If you choose to run it at boot time, this line will be added to your rc.gpm. Shall we load the GPM program at boot time? Probably. Would you like to configure your network? Yes. Enter your host name. First, we'll need to we'll need the name you'd like to give your host. Only the base host name is needed right now, not the domain. For example, Darkstar. So I think this is the name of the computer. So we're just gonna call this uh, like uh, Slackware VM, which is good. Do that. Now we need the domain name, such as this. Uh, do you need actually need a domain name? Is the question. Some like some like uh, MX Linux requires you to have a, a domain name in, in, entered, but you can use something like example.com, something like that. Do you so question do I actually need to enter this or can I leave it blank or do I need to use just a regular, you know, domain? Yep, chat is still back at the MBR thing. Yes to domain. Localhost is your domain name. All right, John, you said you were going to help me. No, you can leave it. Getting conflicting answers from the chat. John is way far behind. He's supposed to be helping me, but he's like five minutes behind. I, I don't think it does, but I want to, <laughs> I can't stop. I can't, I'm not restarting. Damn it. Okay. 
I'm just going to hit OK then. Some advanced networking setups require setups great uh, require a VLAN ID in order to connect to the network. Do you wish to configure a VLAN ID now? Unless you are sure you require a VLAN ID, hit, hit no. OK, I have no clue what that means. Uh, now we need to know how your machine connects to the network. If you have an internal network card and an assigned IP address gateway or, and DNS, use the static IP choice to enter the to enter these values. If your IP address is assigned by DHCP, commonly used by cable modem and DSL services, select DHCP. Select Network Manager if you would like to have the Network Manager daemon automatically handle your wired and wireless network interfaces. This is simple and usually works. IPv6 networks also may include Slack, state, stateless address auto configuration. To assign the an address based on router 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 advertisements. If you do not have a network card, select your loopback device. Uh, that'd be like having a snap installed. I'm just gonna do network manager because that's what I know. Your networking system is now configured to use network manager for wired and wireless network management. To set up wireless networks and view status, add network manager control panel widget to your desktop. Is this correct? Hit yes to confirm or no to abandon. Settings accepted. Basic network configuration is complete. Okay, so the selected services will start at boot time. If you don't need them, you may unselect them to turn them off, which may improve overall system security. You may also choose to start services that are not run by default. But be aware that more services means less security. Use the spacebar to select the and unselect the services you wish to run. Recommended choices have been pre-selected. Press enter key when you are finished. Okay, so I think the only thing we need to make sure that is actually here is going to be the, the one for the network manager thing, right? I think I might, so I think I'm, if I install this on hardware later on, I'm going to need to make sure things like uh, the, the NFSD probably, I don't know, even know. Um, Josh, you're installing Slackware wrong. <laughs> oh, thank you, Josh. I don't think I actually need it. Do I need to do SSHD? It's already checked anyways. You don't need any of that. Yeah, OTB has done several uh, Slackware install videos. I just did not have a chance to watch any of them. He did message me on pa Patreon as well, so I probably should check and see that because I'm probably doing something completely wrong. <laughs> he messaged me and told me to do something, but I didn't write it down. I should go check and see what that is. It would be horrible if he, ch he solved all of my problems and then I didn't pay attention to OTB. Alright, looking for your Slack where unfortunately I don't see. SBO tools, I think that's going to be later on, right? And back to Slack builds. We'll have to look that up later. Alright, so I'm supposed to hit enter. Okay, I hope everybody got everything there. Would you like to try out some custom screen fonts? Sure. Why not? Select one of the following custom fonts. If you decide you like it, you can make it your new default screen font. You'll be able to try as many of these as you like. What you got? I don't recognize any of these fonts so far. Those are very descriptive names. I'm just got to say this. These are very, very, like, I know exactly what this font means. <laughs> Excuse me. 
select one of those. The new font is now installed. You may test it by typing stuff. Typing stuff. I don't know about y'all, but that looks exactly the same as it was before, but sure. You may now test it by typing anything you want. To quit the testing font, enter one on any on a line by itself and accept the font and go on or two to install online by itself to reject the current font and select a new one. Sure. Is the hardware clock set to coordinated universal time? If it is, select yes here. If the hardware clock is set to current local time, this is how most PCs are set up and say no here. If you're not sure what this is, you should answer no here. So I'm gonna go ahead and no, cause I'm not actually sure. Please select your time, one of the following time zones for your machine. So we're gonna go here. All right. This part of the configuration process will create X and Y symlinks in the user slash bin pointing to your default X, Y editors. On a fresh installation, this will point to NVI by default as it is lightweight and supports UTF-8. You may choose a different default if you prefer, but please note that Elvis does not support UTF-8. Okay, I did not know that Elvis was the name of Slackware's traditional editor. Okay, so um, we're gonna use Vim because of course we are. Please select the default window manager to use with the X window system. We'll just go ahead and use the KDE one, I guess. Although KDE is not the window manager. KDE is the desktop environment. KWIN is the window manager. You know, just to be specific. I don't know what this is all about. I'm getting text messages. Pardon me. Okay, well, that text message was not important. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the KDE one because we installed all that stuff, all the goodies. There currently is no root password set in the system administrator account. It is recommended that you set one now so that it is active the first time the machine is rebooted. This is especially important if you're using network enabled kernel and the machine is on an internet connected LAN. Would you like to set a root password now? Yes. New password, very strong and complicated. Very strong and complicated. Enter to continue. The system configuration install installation is now complete. You may now reboot your system. Okay. We did all that stuff. So I think now we can exit. Please remove the installation disk. Reboot. Here we go. So what do you think the chances are of this actually booting into, a, you know, a usable system? Hmm? A very strong and complicated password. You're never going to guess what my strong and complicated password is. Josh, just never. Um, well, definitely did not take you into a display manager. Um, but that's okay. Probably... It didn't even ask for a root or a uh, user. Create a user. Interesting. So. All right, John. Was this where I was supposed to be? LQ Larry? Then you can create a non-root user, right? Welcome to Slackware. Okay, so first thing first. Let's change that display resolution. See if that will actually hold. Um, right here, and apply, and keep. Okay, working. All right, cool. Close that. Actually, we're going to want to come that back up because we actually need, I'm pretty sure that we're going to want to create our an own user, right? And you don't want to do everything as root. 
I can just do that from here. will not let you select just a, a three-letter password why doesn't it let me hit set password hmm i was just gonna do it in the gui for once but the gui is failing me wait a minute hold on we'll do it this way There we go. Now, if we log out. That should take us back to the TTY. Theoretically. My password is strong and top complicated. There we go. Change that display resolution again. Okay. Keep. Very good. Cool. Now. Terminal. Okay. Interesting prompt there. Okay. So let's see here. We need Firefox. How to install software on Slackware. I don't know how. I'm completely new and I want to learn myself. He even has the animations, kind of. Cool. The official packages can be found on the Slackware CD-ROM or the Slackware FTP HTTP mirrors. The package browser... Let me actually just see if... It's installed everything, so NeoFetch has to be there. There you go. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Password too strong. <laughs> yep, everything seems to be working fine. It even has a, the, uh, you can even tuck cups and everything is running. We got the HP uh, server status icon down here at the bottom. Unofficial community combined repositories can be searched for at slackfind.net, which indexes most well-known community repositories and Slackware compatible spin-offs like slacky.eu and slack slikes. Oh yeah, slikes OS. Usually the package name ends with .tgz or .txz. To install the packages, you need to find need to change the root user to the root user either either by using the command su or sudo -i. Enter your root password, and I run command. Okay. The thing we're just supposed to be looking up here. Is, what was it called? SBO tools. And the other thing was... Black package plus, I suppose, is the other thing, right? 
PKG plus SBO tools. Okay. Here's so you can actually see the chat. Okay, so let's see your SPO tools is a, provides ports like interface for slackbuilds.org. It consists of several commands and a configuration file. It is written entirely in Perl and bundles a copy of the sort versions module with itself for its own usage. This will not interfere with copies installed via CPAN or slackbuilds.org. For Slackware is 14, 14 .1, and 14.2, you need the latest version of the 2.x branch, which is available here as a source tarball or is ready made package is also available slackbuilds.org's SBO tool page SBO tools page the source code for the 1.x and 2.x branches is available at downloads page uh, none of that stuff really applies to me because those are all older versions I don't see anything here for 15.0 there's also some documentation available I don't always like when they say some documentation I like great documentation but it's yeah it's okay What do I need to do that for, John? Matt is not in the sudoers file. Okay. I have to remember how to do that. I could just do su sudo dash i maybe would work. No, sudo. I don't think that will get gonna work either. Sudo su. No. Either way, it's not going to work because sudo. I'm not in the sudoers file. Yep. Okay, there we go. Now we're in the right route. I always forget about su. Never have to use it. <laughs> you you think message me on on on. Uh, Discord is helping, but I'm just, it's just going to make Discord freeze. I still have that problem from time to time. Alright, I've forgotten what I was doing. Oh, well, because somebody told me... I needed to do... Vim into slash Etsy. Then it was what? Slack PKG mirrors. Okay. What do I need to do here? I remember Vice Do I, I never own, I only use that once. Again, I'm asking John what I'm supposed to be doing here. He told me to go here, but now I'm here for no reason. Desperate need of water. Give me just a second. I'm going to go get a drink.
Okay. I'm back. <clears throat> Delicious water then make me cough. Okay. What's going on here? Okay. All right, so let's see. On Slack where you can use sudo, but you uh, have to update or install it. it. Has to be done with sue. Yeah. I, I know you have to probably add yourself to the wheel group or the sudo or file. I remember doing that the first time I installed Arch, but it's been a while. Um, again, I asked why was I sent to this file. I don't remember. I don't know why. Uh, something to uncomment on, I'm sure. Probably because you want me to find the U.S. stuff here. Probably and uncomment it. Sweden, Ukraine. United Kingdom, United States. So do I do, do I comment all this stuff? Like this? Am I about to break this system? <laughs> okay, so rule number one, Josh, is to never let Zany choose a distro for you because he's just going to make you change again. That man, distro hops like nobody's business. I'm honestly surprised he's been on OpenBSD as long as he has. Um, so I would say choose the distro that you want to you know use. Um, I'd recommend Slackware. It looks fun. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be sticking with Slack where I'm just test I'm just playing around. Will not work with more than one mare, so what you're saying is I need to go through and do uh recomment some of those lines. I suppose that makes sense. So which one should be once one should be closer but the, all right, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay. So do some un undoing here. Go here and do this. Okay. Just one. Okay, installing Slackware again. You'll do a better job of it than I am, for sure. Okay, so now that we've done that, SBO tools, documentation. So which do we need to do first? Is there like an order that needs need to be done in? The documentation is not impressive. At least so far. Okay, pro tip for developers who need to do, 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 to do documentation. The first thing you need to do when you do documentation is say, hey, you idiots, here's how you install this. Which, you're, you know, that's number one. Well, it's number two. The first thing you need to do is tell people what you're doing, what it is. Okay, and then the next thing is how do you install it? Everything else is secondary. Get away from SPO tools. I've been told SPO tools is good. That's what I've been told, is that SPO tools is good and it's helpful. By multiple people I've been told it's good, so. Go to Slackware and read the man. Yeah, I don't care. Configuration. Slackware compiles with the Linux file system standard. This page explains what some of the key directories and root directories are. 
This page helps users get a PPP connection up, set up under Slack where it is covers using the PPP setup. I don't know what that is. X window system network setup user administration. See if this recovers. Nope. System initialization, package management. This is what we need right here. Blackware's package manage, package system uses ordinary compressed tar files. The system allows you to keep track of the packages you install, making it easier to upgrade or move them down the road. Slackware provides an interactive program for managing your packages. You can use package tool to handle adding and removing packages from your system. You can also use these command line utilities to work with packages. Below is a brief overview of the commands. However, you should always consult the man pages before using them. Okay, so Dem Slack word where has Yeah, I'm not gonna call anybody on Discord right now. The last thing I need is for my stream to stop working. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to run these things that Dem Slackward has told me to do. So, do I need to, I'm assuming I need to run those as roots. So, if I'm, I'm going to do that, probably not a good idea, but we're going to do it anyways. Slack PKG update GPG. Probably because I didn't spell it right. PKG. Okay. And then we need to do update this is turning into gen 2 all at once I'm getting multiple you know do this do this do this what do I do I don't know so, and then update upgrade Dash all. Okay, so we're doing an update. Okay. Yeah, John, you're way behind, my friend. That was like five minutes ago. I should have had this water earlier. It made me feel so much better. What time are we gotten right now? It is 9.16. Wow. I got about another 20 minutes in me. And I'm probably going to be done for the night. I know. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to. You guys told me to do it. Was I not supposed to do an update? Why is, did somebody tell me to do it then? <laughs> one bottle of water. Gone. Glad I grabbed the, the second one. All right, back to the chat here. Yeah, I don't know if I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but why do I need? I'm not messing around with Lilo. After every kernel update, you need to mess around with the, the Lilo config. Okay. Is that true? I don't even know if that's true.
Uh, I see it's deleting a whole bunch of stuff. That's always a good thing. <laughs> That's terrifying. Stop it. Stop deleting everything. No. <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> I hope you're supposed to be deleting all those things. Good lord. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, never, ever. <laughs> uh, that's terrifying. Uh, I swear I did not RMRF slash. I swear I didn't RMRF slash. Deleting an awful lot of shit. <laughs> oh, it's probably because that's an old kernel, right? Okay. But if so, damn. That's... That's, that's, <laughs> that's not the kind of scrolling line of text that you ever want to see. <laughs> yes, I just deleted XORG server. That was one of my, my more fun videos where I actually did that. Um. <laughs> and I think I spent more time deleting things than actually upgrading them. Keyboard on Android is so much better than the one on iOS. It's just unbelievably how much. Oh yeah, I switched back to Android, guys. And I didn't say this to anybody, but and there's just so many things on iOS that were just pissing me off. The keyboard on iOS is just utter garbage, and you can get third-party keyboards, right? But they all switch back to the original ones eventually, and at random times, and I don't know why. Also, none of them are any good anyways, but whatever. I am regretting going with a Samsung, though. All right. All right, thanks, John, for stopping by. I'm sorry you're so far behind, man. Um, But I'm glad you were here. Thanks for your help. I do appreciate it. Um, you wouldn't think with this just having been released not too long ago, there'd just be this much to update, but... Josh, don't try iOS. You won't be happy with it. If you're really upset with Android, try a custom ROM or something. I'm, there's so f first on iOS the notifications are terrible. You there are actionable notifications, but they're only actionable when they come in. Once they've either been relegated back to the notification shade or dismissed, you can't do anything with them. Okay, so apparently, do you want to? What do you want? K O R P. Keep old files and consider dot new files later. Overwrite all old files with new ones. The old files will be stored in the suffix dot ridge. Remove all dot new files or prompt for every single file. Um. Oh yeah, that's the problem I'm gonna have too. Is the the Samsung phone does not uh, like custom ROMs. 
At least not the new ones. Okay, so I want to O here. I'm assuming that did it, or I, not? Was it supposed to be capital O? It did literally nothing. Right. It, was there supposed to be some output after that, or did I just do all that for nothing? This is the question. Nice. Hello there, gorgeous. Ladies and gentlemen, Crusader. That's so good. Now I need to Lilo config. Okay, I'm going to do that. Can I do the automatic thing again? I'm assuming that I did right there. Okay, now I guess the, I should go and see actually what Applications are installed because it installed a shit ton of applications. I mean, I actually need to install anything. Audacious, Audacious, Lincoln. Uh, so let's just say I wanted to install Audacity. What would I do? Would I do. Okay, so Slackware packages. That's not helpful. Probably. So what if I, I'm just curious what this would do. So install PKG city TGZ. Nope. I didn't think that that would actually work. That's not actually all that helpful then, is it? Probably. SL package is a good package manager for Slackware that helps user to keep updated installation before you look at discord holy shit it uses package tools to install it at all to install bare packages it's install package on the one slack package install no output it's good now in layla config simple <laughs> These one word responses of yours, Dem Slackware, is, is, are delicious. They're awesome. Thank you. And you're done. Also, get SBO tools. Huh? Tell me how. So I do Slack PKG install SBO tools. Is that what I need to do? No, I didn't think so because I didn't actually spell it right. Fucking dyslexia. Looking for SPO tools, package list, wait, done, no packages, pattern, tribe. No. Okay, that didn't work. Actually work. SPO tools makes it easy. Like, you keep telling me this, but nobody's ever actually told me how to install the damn thing. And the documentation is uh, not great. I mean, there's some man pages down here, but SBO install? But that isn't how you, how you get, get SPO tools installed. So let's see, from source, compiling from scratch, community repositories.
Oh, that's what it wants you to do is to download it. Okay, where's that? I saw that earlier. Downloads. SBO tools, probably the latest one, right? Download that. Save file. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, so that's in. So CD, oops, CD downloads. LS. So use install PKG SBO tools. All does not end in. Right. So install. In, install package gem slag where it doesn't actually work. And that's just literally what you just told me to do. You need to use slack build. So not. On the main page. But not that one. I'm so I'm so bloody confused. I'm looking at Discord. Use that on the main page. SPO tools on the main page. Here's the source tarball. You're talking about this thing here? It's exactly the same. SPO tools 2.7.tar.gz. Exactly the same. It says ready, ready made package. Oh, it's this one here. Okay. All right. Well, that's Okay. So All right. So we'll try that one. So what was install PKG and SBO tools dash no arch like that. Well, that was easy. Okay. Now what am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> right? <laughs> then what you what are you supposed to do with it? Um So let's look at the documentation again because we gotta do some of these some of the stuff myself. Alright. Here you can find what documentation is available for current version of SBO SBO tools. As SBO tools is highly influenced by FreeBSD support system and its package tools, the interface will be more or less familiar to anyone familiar with port upgrade. Tyler, where are you when I need you, bro? I mean, I know you're just open BSD, but still, probably the same stuff. Uh, the first thing which needs to be done after installing SBO tools is pull up a, pull a local copy of the slackbuilds.org tree minus the excess bit. This is optionally done automat automatically. Uh, at first run of SDO find, SBO upgrade, or SBO install, or manually via the SBO snap command. So we'll run that SBO snap fetch. SBO upgrade and SBO install on these versions will. Pull the list of requirements from a given Slack builds.info file or on 13.37. We'll look for given Slack builds readme, blah, 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 blah. Um, this is recursive so that the ordering happens correctly. The functions correctly for this functions correctly for dash compact 32 packages as well. And since a compact 32 is only somewhat useful without its 64 bit counterpart installed since the compact. 32 will have its header stripped out. SBO tools will offer to install the 64 bit version first if it's not already installed. For various sanity reasons, if the dash R flag is provided to bypass viewing the README, no requirement handling parsing is done. Asking a tool to automatically do such things without reading the relevant README files is bad, bad, bad idea. I'm not going to be good at using Slack where I don't like using reading README's. Reading is hard. I can do this. So do SBO install Audacity. It looks like Audacity has options. Would you like to set any of them when Slack build run? Default no. We'll just do no for now. That's fine. Proceed with Audacity. Yes. Are you sure you wish you continue? Yes. Okay. Sorry, right, chat. I was ignoring you for Discord. Also, Josh, did you change your username again? Or are you just here in two different... 
<laughs> you and your two different uh, accounts. That'd be hilarious. So I'm going to go here to this thing next. Some settings. Change to the dark theme. Apply. And there we go with that. Much better. About the system. So this is using KD Plasma version 5.23. Which probably is going to... It's actually probably going to have upgraded if that upgrade actually worked. Who knows? Um, kernel version 5.15, which is fairly recent, which is pretty good. Um, surprisingly, it's actually reading the processor correctly. Usually, in Vert Manager, it uses it reads it as an epic. Cool. Close that. This is going to take a bit. Oh, you switched to the phone because you're installing Slackware. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Yeah, I don't know why I decided to build Audacity when I know it takes forever on a system that has like 16 cores instead of just four. <laughs> why not? <laughs> the thing is, my uh, software needs aren't esoteric, so probably most of the stuff that I'd actually need is in the standard Slackware repo repositories or repo repository. Uh, the only thing that would be probably not there is a lacquery. Oh, fuck you, Firefox. Nobody, nobody likes you. Probably gonna have lost those because by default. Yeah, they're all gone. <sighs> sure. Why not? Okay. Now I've forgotten what I was looking for. Oh, uh. Oh, it's in Slack builds. I think that would work, right? Well, I wonder like I three gaps is I three. What about I three gaps? Okay. We we'll download this. Next, download the source of the application from the address listed at chem. Hmm. It is important to read the readme before building any scripts. Some maintainers put notes in the readme file, but optional dependencies, available build options, warning. About potential conflict with Slackware packages, steps to be taken before building the package, and after installing the package, and any and many other things that relates to the scripts. In other words, read the readme. That's always fun. 
Is your version of ChemTools newer than the, what is specified in the slide goal description? And use what are, SQG? What is SQG? Calculary. What does that mean? I don't know what that. I don't know what half of this shit means. Slackware. Why can't you just be a normal distro? <laughs> Okay. Only have 40% for audacity. <laughs> no. I don't know what you're saying no to, Sue Slackware. Yep. I wish it would help if I wasn't on top chat and actually on live chat. Way better. Gaps are bloated anyways. Thank you, Joshua. Gaps are awesome. Take that shit back. SQG is a package that will add the dependencies to the queue that you can install with SBO package. F Society, why aren't you using Plan 9? I'm disappointed in you. You're supposed to be using Plan 9. You're the Plan 9 guy. Oh, man. But I think installing software is going to be the adventure for Slackware. Some of the stuff will be easy. It'll be the Slackware build stuff that I'm not actually sure what... SBO tools does dependencies. Okay, so what? Chat is wrong. Okay. Can I install i3 gaps with SBO tools? Like SBO install i3 gaps is a slack build for it but i don't know what it means i don't know how to use it rat poison <laughs> people have been trying to get me to, to use rat poison for ages I have been uh, resistant to say the least um, mostly because I watched uh, JK Linux's videos on him and it seems more complicated than I'm interested in you know actually doing Installs everything in SB on SBO. It's like an AUR helper. Okay. I think I was told that. Yeah. What did be told me that? Sadly, nine front doesn't run on my current laptop, and I can't get it to work on OpenBSD as a VM. Oh, that is just that's devastating. You're the you're the you're the nine front plan nine guy. We're gonna go ahead and let Audacity continue to run here, cause why the hell not? It's almost done. Be interesting to see if it actually finishes, because it depends on what version of Audacity it's. It's going for three dot oh. Hmm. 
some of the Audacity 3.0 ones won't actually compile because it doesn't like FFmpeg 5.0. I had that problem a lot on Arch. That's the reason why I can't use Audacium. My i3 configuration file is like 5 to 10 lines long, but that's just because I sourced everything else. So I'm a cheating, a cheating cheater who cheats. I still got to make a video for tomorrow. And it is now quarter to 10. I can't believe I chose Audacity to be the thing that I installed. That's so stupid. <laughs> I think I should know better. That's, I think I should know it was going to take forever. It takes forever on my system with all the resources. I joined the IRC, and I've promised to join Tyler's IRC. I have not done so yet. Uh, my main reasoning for it is, first of all, I've been busy. Second of all, I don't remember how to use IRC. <laughs> I did a video on IRC when I first started the channel. I never used it before, and I haven't used it since. Will I do an LF on, LFS on stream? No. <laughs> Absolutely. Bloody not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Robot. Uh, I highly recommend you going back and watching Tyler's doing that. He, he streamed for like 40 hours doing that, and he wasn't successful. No, I won't be doing that. Even for all the money in the world, I would not do it. Like, there's not a Patreon goal that I could set that would make me install LFS. I just don't have that kind of patience or time or energy or interest, fortunately. Or smarts, really, because I'd fail for... I mean, I just ask Ben. I barely installed Gen 2. Right, eighty percent being mentioned on. Also, you have time. Do call me so I can tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> All right, damn Slack. Where when I have time, I'll do that. Also, if Audacity does not compile, you can install it through uh, Slack Package Plus. It lets you add three pa part third party packages to Slack Package. Okay. Alien Bob repo is the one. I don't know what that means. I know alien who Alien Bob is. I heard that heard that name from OTB. Mm. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna try I three gaps after this. If that will install. All right. <laughs> Have you watched Mr. Robot? No, I have not. I don't watch stuff that's modern very often. Uh, only for the other podcasts do I ever watch them like a modern movie when the other guys force me to. Like we watched Encanto, Encanto last. 
and that was okay. But um, I'm not big on the modern stuff. Yay, audacity. <laughs> no, no, not... Um, if you're talking about me... Talking to me about the other... The podcast I mentioned. It's not a school podcast. It's our other podcast. I do a podcast with three friends... Or two friends... Uh, about movies. Once a month. It's called the three cast. I think that's the URL. Yep, right there. That's the three cast. Sometimes we talk about other things, but excuse me. For the most part, we talk about movies. We're slowly working our way through the Bond film. We'll be done in about five years. Probably closer to ten years, actually. Because we only do it every fourth episode. We only do one episode a month. We're doing another one this month. So, be fun. It is on Apple Podcasts. I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to copy this, but... It's right here. Nope. I could probably, you know, not do this in the... Anchor.fm has the slowest website in the history of websites. I'm just going to put that out there. There we go, right there. That's the other one. It's fun. It's also You can also obviously get the rest of the... It's on other places other than Apple. You can find all of those places here. Like I said, we go once a month. It's not as well edited as the three cast, as you just pointed out there, because we record on Skype. So, uh, yeah. It's a fun little podcast. Uh, Vince and Ricky and I get along really well. We've been doing that podcast since 2009. Yeah, we've been doing that podcast for a while. Now, granted, the older episodes are not available online and anywhere because reasons we changed the name so many times we changed hosts too many times things have been lost but i think everything like to 2017 is still there i have older podcasts somewhere on youtube you really want the older stuff but anyways yeah that's the other podcast that i do we have a good time Yeah, I know, Skype. <laughs> I can't help it. We've been using Skype forever. We hate it. We're probably going to... I think we're trying Zoom next time, which is probably not any better. I'd like to actually get them to use Jitsi, but I don't think that they would. Those guys aren't into Linux and open source like I am. Well, I mean, Ricky is. He was actually on the first episodes of the Linux cast way back in 2017. He started it with me, uh, but I don't think he's still into Linux. Although he might be, and I don't, I don't even know. Why Skype? It's just because that's what we've always used. And Vince isn't technological all that much. I mean, he knows computers, but he's not a nerd like the rest of us. So uh, we just use the thing that we've always used. Well, like I said, I think we're going to try Zoom next time because he's familiar with that as well. And it, it at least should be a little bit better, even if it's not, you know, morally better. I would like them to uh, like sign up for Discord and we could just use Discord because I'm very familiar with recording from Discord, but. I don't know. It's just, it's just something that we do. Am I surprised that Audacity took this long? No. Uh, surprised that I didn't remember that it was going to take this long. With four cores, it was always going to take a while. 
It's going to take a while. Have I done a BSD yet? No, I haven't done a BSD yet. Though I'm sure Tyler is going to eventually talk me into it. Maybe someday. I want an easy one first. Like, I was watching some of that stuff that uh, Tyler was doing last night on his stream. Like, he says it's easy, but it was beyond me, some of it. Hmm. Mostly because I'm just an idiot. Not because it's probably actually all that hard, but when it comes to some stuff, I just can't get it. It takes me a while. I'm very slow when it comes to everything. <laughs> Look how long it took me to figure out how to do CF Desk earlier. Oh, by the way, what's my plan on Patreon? I don't have a plan on Patreon goal. <laughs> I, I watched that insula un insulation Tyler did of that too. And, uh, yeah, that's never going to happen either, probably. Yeah, I've heard Ghost BSD is the one that I want to try. It's probably the one that I'll go with when I give that a try. I have that on my list to do. But my list keeps getting bigger every single day. I haven't recorded a video in three days, by the way. I've been doing other things. Now i got to record a video tonight. That's why I need this to hurry up. <laughs> I've been streaming now for an hour and 53 minutes, which is about a half an hour longer than what I was going to. Ninety-seven percent. Hmm. 98% <laughs> like watching grass grow. The grass is growing. It's growing some more. It, it has grown. And then it died. Only, you know, in Charlton. I don't even know what I was going to say. I lost it. I know. I knew it was going to take a while. And it's done. There we go. Yay. So. I can't type with a damn anymore. At all. Okay. Now go back here. Okay. So. Do. I've been told I can do this. SBO install. And then. I3 gaps. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Yep, yep, these are all the dependencies. Make sure the name is how they spell it on the website, which I think it did. I think it did, I think it did right? I3 dash gaps. Yeah. It seems to be working. Yes. 
There we go. How long that takes. It won't take as long as Audacity, I don't think. It'll be pretty fast, quite honestly. All right, LQ Larry, you told me actor gaps won't work. We're going to see if you're right or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm still going. To, oh, wait a minute. TFL's here? Ah, TFL's here. It is awful like, early for you, my friend. I think that's a success. Zany's still in the chat. I was calling you earlier, Tyler. I don't remember what for, though. Okay, so the other thing was the alacrity, so... That's what it's called, right? So, and so what you're saying, TFL, is that you hear someone talk about i3 and you're just like, did somebody call me? <laughs> it installed, it's installed the menu as a dependency. you get the i3, the idiot's guide to making i3 actually good? What do you think is bad about i3, Josh? I don't understand. Well, I mean, what what part of it is is upsetting to you? I hear the i3's in the wind. <laughs> Make your gaps bigger, i3. Make your gaps get bigger. <laughs> I'm just going to put this out there, but if, if Alacrity actually builds here, Slack will then have been better than Debian was because I could not get Alacrity to build on Debian. I did get it built to build on MX Linux uh, for a minute, and then I did a reboot, and then it went away. <laughs> I literally went back into MX Linux after a reboot, and Audacity or Alacrity was no longer in the the, the launcher. I don't know why. All right, so i3 uses just a standard readable configuration. It's not an actual language. Uh, it's just something you have to kind of get used to. It's not bad, I don't think. It's It could be worse. They could use YAML. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if they used YAML, you'd be, you'd be upset about it, so... I think it's okay. If you've ever configured Polybar, it's basically the same structure. Some, some, somewhat. It's not exactly the same, obviously, but it's, it's a readable kind of stuff. It actually built pretty fast. I was actually very, very, very impressed with that. Oh, but YAML has all those stupid rules about, you know, spacing and shit. I hate YAML. Can't stand it. Oh. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's key equals value. It's exactly what it is. Uh, and it works fine. Like if, I mean, if you can... If you can uh, configure DWM or... 
awesome WM or something like that, you can do I3, no problem, because it's way easier. And, and Josh, if you want to use something that is less manual, look for a package called auto-tiling. Auto uh, that basically makes it not so manual. It's good. It's what I use. I can actually show you if you want me to. And go to 8 here. Auto-tiling does this. Like this. That's what auto tiling does. It's just a package and you put it in your auto start file and it does this. Basically what it does is it alternates between uh, vertical uh, spawn mode and horizontal. Every other one. Every time you open up a new client, it does that. It kind of makes it BSPWM, quite honestly. But it's good. Alright. So, let's quit out of this. Um, the next thing we need to do is uh, do an ls here, dash a. Now, so we're in downloads, cd up a level. Do an ls here, ls dash a again. Vim init, uh, vim init, x init, rc. Um, so, this does. What exactly is it doing? So start the window manager. Why are they calling KDE a window manager? Stop doing that. If desktop session, which is defined up here, not defined actually up there, desktop session, probably it's probably a global variable then. Somebody just told me something, so let's hear. By the way, slide builds is the official wait blah blah blah. Put your X in it RC dot I three and slash X in it so that you can use XWM config. I don't know what that means. So nice. Put your you, you repeated yourself there. But I don't know what I don't know what that means. Honestly, I kinda want a login manager or display manager. It'd be so much better <laughs> just to be able to choose sessions like that. But I don't understand. I don't see a reason why I can't just comment all this stuff out here and just do exec i3. I mean, why wouldn't that work? I mean, this stuff probably can stay, but just get rid of this if statement. Do this. Alright, somebody's gonna have to tell me what XWM config is. I don't actually know what that is. What are the best programming language it has? The command. Okay, so if I. Fine. One and, so I'm gonna just leave this here then. Get out of that. I mean, what, what you're telling me I needed to do was. cd into slash etsy x11 which i don't actually see because it's, yeah, it's because it's capitalized and then ls x in it is okay so So there's already an i3 gaps one there. So I can just run. Do I actually need to create that x in it, that i3 thing, or is it just use this one to x wm config? I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna see if you guys are right.
what, what, all XWM config. XWM config. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Enter generate config. Enter win, win key. And we actually have a terminal here. So we can do xrander s 1920 by 1080. There we go. Clear that. Now cdnt.config. I3. I3 vim config. Oops. Ah. And then, <laughs> then config, my damn alias is not here. You can change this to, now where is this? I3 sensible terminal. Alacrity. Save this. Restart this. Enter. There's Alacrity. Boom. I3, I3 gaps. Winning. That is cool. I I three gaps on Slackware. Here's proof. Like winning. <laughs> and Alacrity. Alacrity installed and built built on Slackware and it wouldn't on Debian. So in the battle of best old ass distro, Slackware wins. Alright. Okay, so friends, thank you for watching. I have got to stop the stream before it goes on too much longer because I'll just stay here all night and continue tinkering. And then there won't be no video for tomorrow, which will make everybody really sad. Also, it will make my view count sad. So uh, yeah, that is going to be the end of this stream. Thanks everybody who's watched. Thanks everybody who has helped me for uh, go through this and answered all my idiotic and silly newbie quest questions. I really do appreciate that. Uh, before I go, I should probably do the Patreon thing. So you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast where you'll find uh, early videos. And I should thank these people. Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, I'm Tools, Steve, Ace, Everglenn, Nix, Garrick, Samuel, KB, TB, TGB, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Andy, Ross, Eduardo, Merrick, Camp, Joshua, Lee, Peter, A, Crucible, Dark, Minus, Six, Primus, and PM. I really do appreciate everybody who watches all this stuff and supports me. I really do appreciate that. So...